What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode, this is episode number 72 and we started today's episode off by looking to reinvest all the money we got in the last episode after selling four of our players. Now if you missed the last episode, I do highly recommend you guys go back and watch it, I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. We sold four of our players for a combined total of £84 million, it was an unbelievable episode, £84 million got given to us for four players, we sold Joel Matip, our centre back to Inter for £30 million pounds. We sold Morgan Schneiderlin to Valencia for £28 million. We sold John Joe Shelby to Norwich for £20 million. And we also sold the homesick Belgian striker Robbie Olare, not to a Belgian side, but to Aston Villa instead for £6 million. We went 100 miles in the other direction to Belgium, but uh, still, we do go ahead and sell four of those players in the last episode. Got ourselves £84 million. And in today's episode, we look to reinvest that money and try and sign some replacements for those four players. And you saw the two players we initially put bids in for here right to begin today's episode here two of the players my two main targets are replacements for Matip and Schneidlin selling Shelby not a big deal and 20 million pounds I thought was a really good deal for the former Swansea man selling Obiolari not a big deal wasn't too big of a fan of him and he was homesick anyway apparently wanted to leave the club so six million pounds wasn't too bad for us but selling on Matip who's been fantastic this season selling on Schneidlin who's been a pretty impressive form this season since coming in from United in the summer transfer window I was thinking should I have done that well, I'm not too sure, but the one thing we need to do is try and replace those two players instantly. We can wait for Shelby and Obiolare, but for Matipa and Schneider, we need to get replacements in as soon as possible. So I put in bids for Imeric Laporta of Juventus, formerly of Bilbao, of course, and uh, in real life Bilbao as well. And also William Carvalho, the Aston Villa defence midfielder, formerly of Sporting, uh, of course. I put in a bid for these two players. Villa rejected a bid for William Carvalho. He's out of form, so I thought well, maybe I was getting cheaper, but obviously not. But for Juventus, they they accepted a straight valuation bid of Laporta for £22.5 million. Now, what a fantastic deal that could prove to be because we sold Matip to Inter for £30 million. Laporta would be £7.5 million cheaper than Matip. He's one rating higher. He's three years younger. That would be an absolutely fantastic deal. We offer him a contract and we shall wait and see what the French centre-half says. What a great deal that would be. We'll have to wait and see what he wants to swap the Juventus Stadium for Vicarage Road. So we take on Sheffield Wednesday for the first game of today's episode here is the championship side come and take us on of course we are the holders of this competition we just about beat Morecambe the league two side after a replay here at Vicarage Road in the last round in the third round that was a very frustrating game they took it to extra time in that one the goalkeeper was on fire I was wondering whether I'd struggle in this game as well I talked about my struggles against lower league sides before you know we got knocked out by Leeds in the Capital One Cup the championship side last season here at Vicarage Road we got beat by Fleetwood Town in the Capital One Cup this season as well. Morecambe taking us to a replay into extra time in that replay as well. I was wondering whether we'd struggle in this game, but in the fourth round of the FA Cup, we do take the lead through Birch and Traore. Crescito made a good save early on. Once Traore opened the scoring, I was feeling quite confident. And just before half time, the Williams to Williams connection. This could be the first of many times we'll see this. It's Sam Williams into Anaki Williams, and Williams turns it in and makes it Watford 2, Sheffield Wednesday nil. So we double our advantage here just before half time. Williams, of course, a new signing, the uh, regen of Frank Lampard, comes in, gets an assist on his debut, plays it to Anaki Williams, that Williams to Williams connection, and it is Anaki who finishes it on the stroke of half time and makes it what for two, Sheffield Wednesday nil. So two goals over the break. I thought we were playing quite well. The away side were having more possession than us, but I thought we were the better side. Not much really happened in the second half, though, to be honest, and it was still 2 0. But later on in the game, in stoppage time in the 90th minute, we had a good chance to seal the win and get ourselves through to the FA Cup fifth round, and we do just that. Matej Vidra was played through, was initially tackled but it fell to Troy Deeney who played it inside to the Czech Republic striker and it was a really good finish by Vidra past the goalkeeper and he now has two goals in two games so a good finish there by Vidra really nice composed finish by the number 34 and with Bobby Olari being sold I don't think we need to sign a backup striker now we'll just use Vidra and Deeney whenever Traore, Balotelli and whoever else plays up top with Balotelli is not doing the job so Vidra with another goal there that's two in two games for him one for Inaki Williams and one for Birch and Traore as well proving we don't really need to worry about Bobby Olari going and a really comfortable 3-0 scoreline for us. You may have noticed as well I was playing Watson and Williams, so both the regen of Gerard and Lampard. I did say that in the last episode, I was going to play them two to play the two together at some stage, and that's exactly what we did there. I thought we'd test them out together and see how they did. They both got one assist each, so I thought that was kind of cool. But uh, still, as you can see with that game, we won by three goals to nil. We're through to the FA Cup fifth round. We are more focused this season on the Premier League and the Champions League, but either way, we are the holders of that competition, and therefore we still want to do good. Still following that, we had a bid for 
for Lewis Cook from Stad Rams, and of course we say no. Pretty decent defensive midfielder, he's growing quite nicely despite being a squad player, so we'll keep hold of him. And also as well, you can see that Imeric Laporta does accept his contract and does become the first signing of the episode. So really pleased with that. Laporta is coming in for £22.5 million. As you can see, Villa once again rejects a bid for William Carvalho. They don't want to let go of the guy, not a real surprise. We'll put a bid of £26 million and wait and see what they say. But yeah, Laporta comes in and i got to say, man, that is an absolutely fantastic signing right there. You know, sometimes I downplay my signings a little bit and say, oh, well, we'll see how they do. But for Laporta, you know, even if he doesn't do too well for us, we can sell him on for a profit. And for an 84 overall centre-back replacing an 83 overall centre-back, a 23-year-old centre-back replacing a 26-year-old centre-back, and a centre-back getting sold for £30 million being replaced by a centre-back that costs £22.5 million. Pounds. I mean, all the numbers right there suggest we've done some great business, and I'm really pleased with that. Not to mention the fact that Laporta will have higher potential than Joel Matip. I think we've done some great business there. I'm really, really pleased with that signing. I've used him before as well. If you watch my PSG, Arsenal, and West Brom career mode last year, I used him before. He was really, really good for us. And Laporta, I think, is going to be really, really good for Watford as well. Very pleased with that signing, and I think that is an absolutely fantastic deal. Following that, we put in some bids for Jack Wilshere, Jordan Henderson, and also Aaron Ramsey as well. Those clubs rejected bids for those midfielders, but Aston Villa did come back to us regarding William Carvalho after we put in a third bid of £26 million. Pounds. Was it a fourth bid? I can't remember now. But £26 million pound bid regardless. And they said, yep, that's totally fine. That's a million pound over his valuation. He's in bad form. That's all right. You can take him for £26 million. Pounds. And again, once again, I think we are going to do some absolutely fantastic business here because even though he rejects the first contract, he wanted a wage increase. We give him that wage increase. You'll see he does indeed come in at the second time of asking. He does accept a contract here at Vicarage Road. And that completes two big signings, two fantastic signings in today's episode. So first Laporta for £22.5 million. Now William Carvalho for £26 million. Both of these new signings are younger than the players they're replacing. They've been signed for less than what we got for those players that they are replacing. And they've got a better overall to start with than those two players we've just sold. So compared to their predecessors, these guys are a step up in every single way. I'm really, really pleased with these two signings. And, you know, I've used the two before. I used Carvalho in my Herd of Berlin save back in FIFA 4. I use Laporta in that West Brom PSG and Arsenal save in FIFA 15. I'm sure they'll do just as good in FIFA 16. I know they've got good potential as well. I've uh, signed them in who to sign for during this year. And I'm sure they're going to be really, really good for us. I'm very happy with the signings on the face of things anyway. And hopefully they'll be just as good as Matip and Schneiden were this season. And they'll be really good replacements for those two players. Still, they both make their debuts in this game against Arsenal here for the second and final game of today's episode here as we travel to the Emirates Stadium to take on Arsenal Wenger's side. I've given Laporte the number four shirt as that's what he wears at Athletic Bilbao right now. Carvalho's the number 21, but I may change that in the future. Uh, but uh, those, are the, those are the numbers that they'll wear for the time being. Still taking on Arsenal for the second and final game of today's episode here. The first chance would fall to Arsenal, but be foul. Heads this header off the line. Jack Butland with a rare lapse of concentration gets caught in no man's land. But be foul. Heads the header off the line. See a goal decision system there. Don't think we needed one, but either way, good header off the line by our Morocco number seven, and it is still nil nil. It's 29th minute. Oh, good chance for Arsenal to take the lead as Sanchez gets on the ball and a Chilean gets inside to shoot but it's a fantastic save by Butland at the near post and Ryan Taylor gets the ball away so still goalless and on the stroke of half time another good chance for Arsenal Chamberlain whips it across to the far post picks out his English teammate Danny Welbeck but it's a great save by Butland and he turns it behind for a corner so at half time as you can see Arsenal were playing better six shots four on target we had had more possession but the Gunners were looking really threatening and just a couple minutes after the break here they had a great chance to make it 1-0 Aaron Ramsey who we were looking to a sign was denied by a great save by Jack Butland who does keep it goalless but in the 54th minute how about this Ryan Taylor takes the ball off the Bushi sprints down the left hand side the French right back can't keep up with him he drills in across the centre picks out Loftus-Cheek and at the far post Marco the Magician picks out Ruben Loftus-Cheek and it's Arsenal nil, Watford 1 and I've read some comments from you guys saying I've overtrained Ryan Taylor and I've made a mistake there he's not going to grow in physicals anymore and he's not going to be fast enough that's proof right there that I'm totally Totally fine with Ryan Taylor's pace. He robs the bush, he sprints down the left hand side. The Frenchman couldn't keep up and he puts in a pinpoint drill cross. And at the far post, Loftus Cheek taps it in. That's what you want to see. Mark and a magician to Ruben Loftus Cheek. And it is Arsenal nil, Watford 1. So Arsenal in this game were dominating. They were playing far better than us, but we did have the lead through Loftus Cheek scoring a surprise early goal for us in the second half and making it Arsenal nil, Watford 1. We did have a chance there in the 69th minute to make it 2 0, but Anaki Williams' header goes wide, the post to 
line for a goal kick, but it was really all Arsenal in this game. They were dominating for the most part, but Jack Butland was in the form of his life, making save after save after save again. That was a really good one there to the night, Aaron Ramsey, and keep it at 1-0. From the corner, once again, we see the ball headed off the line by William Carvalho on his debut, saving a certain goal, but sadly for us, I made a huge, huge error from that header away by Carvalho. The adrenaline sort of took over a little bit here as Wilshire got on the ball. He went to shoot on the half volley. I thought he was going to score, so I thought I'd try and block the shot with a slide tackle, but instead took down the midfielder, and the referee rightfully does give a penalty. So penalty to Arsenal, and a great chance for him to equalise from the spot. Sadly for us as well, Santia steps up, gives Butler in the eyes, and sends in the wrong way after the stutter, and makes it Arsenal 1, Watford 1. So the Chilean puts Arsenal back on level terms, but yeah, this goal was my mistake here. Carvalho is shaking his head. He knows. He knows it was my fault. He heads the ball off the line. Does so well for us. Saves a certain goal on his debut that would have given Arsenal the equalising goal. And then seconds later, I give away a stupid, stupid penalty. And Sanchez does equalise. And it was how the game would finish as well. Final score, Arsenal 1, Watford 1. Disappointed to slip up in the league, obviously, as we try and stay top of the table and try and extend the gap in points away from second place United. But you've got to look at this way, man. You'll see the stats in just a moment's time. Yes, I made a big mistake there for the penalty, but had we won that game, it would have been one of the most undeserved victories of the season. We got dominated for the game. Arsenal had 16 shots, 10 of which on target. Despite Butland losing his clean sheet, it was man the match with a staggering 9.9 .9 rating, but either way, a draw is not a bad result away at Arsenal. We'll take it, and I guess if nothing else, it was good to see Carvalho and Laporta play pretty solid on their debuts. But that does it in the episode there, guys, so thank you very much for watching the video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you enjoyed today's episode of Career Mode, then please do leave a like, so it's much appreciated, really just help my channel out, and I'll see you for next episode of Career Mode where there's £30 million left still to spend very soon.